Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Welcome, welcome once more. So, yes, I'm back, and we need to get this turn finished tonight. So this is going to be rather entertaining. Okay, so we have gone over the Malaya campaign. We've gone over Indochina. Uh, we do need to take a look at China itself. For well, this is the cauldron in which we forge our victory. Now, we did... Well, I did... Um, have a bit of a boo-boo over here. I mean, that worked out really at uh, bad timing. But this is no issue. We can easily defeat this Chinese force here. They're incredibly inferior. Uh, so it won't take as much to defeat them. Now let's see what we have here in terms of actual spare troops. So we do, of course, have to maintain the garrison here. It's a shame because I would love to take the 21st Division out of here. We do have a 17th Mixed Brigade. Now let's take a look at uh, what we could manage here. Hello there, Black Star. How are you doing, my friend? Right, I'm terrible at maths, so let's just do the maths here. I don't think I can manage it, but I'm just going to double check. So, 815 minus, let's see, 167 yards. It's not going to work, is it? Yeah, 648. Nah. What's up there, Sophie? How are you doing, my friend? Right. So, we don't have the capability to remove anything particularly amazing here. Uh, which is a shame. I mean, I do have the... Well, the tax police, that's rather interesting. Uh, not very strong, but they do have quite the interesting um, assault value. We do have the Yangtze SLLF. These forces are quite effective. They do actually have some armored car, which is quite nice. Okay. Are you playing some one of these? Fantastic. I do have a hankering to play one of these again. I think what I'll do is um, find an opponent to play like a proper play-by-email game against. I would, of course, play the Axis. I do love the Axis. Or even one of the West could be rather interesting. That could be interesting. Hmm. I do have a hankering for something like that. That would be pretty awesome. Right. Hmm. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay, so we do have the 15th Division moving north. I did bugger it up, actually, by having them... should just left them to move towards this province, and then they would have moved well towards this base here, but that's fine. Uh, okay, so the 15th Division is going to clear out uh, Huainan. They'll manage that. We do have elements of the 32nd Division moving towards this force over here, so their time is numbered. Now, if we take a look at the forces assembling over here at Anyang, we do have uh, a growing amount of assault value here, currently 879. Now, these forces are, of course, are all on strategic, so we do need to take them off the rails. I like playing as the Soviets, but I've never really done a play-by-email game. Uh, I think with the Soviets is one of these things, isn't it? It's like, um... The reason why I like playing the Axis is because you have timetables, you have objectives, you have... You need to move, you need to achieve so very much. As the Soviets, it's like, I do enjoy it, but I find them significantly less enjoyable than I do with the Axis. And due to the fact that, um... The condition for failure is much harder. It's harder to fail. I like something where you are really fighting against it. Which is why I love Japan. I love this game. And I love the fact that I have advisors like yourself, as well as other contributors that do definitely help the play by email go. Because fuck me, I do not want to admit that I've lost a battleship, and it burns me inside to think it might be a possibility. Uh, we did have a stream earlier on today, and I've stuck to my guns on this one, which is uh, having Haruna remain in place with the others. So that SCT hired in, my friend. Okay. So we have these forces, let's have them actually placed on combat. So, set all to this operations mode. Now what I'm going to do is give them all orders to plan for Cheng Chao. So all of them begin to plan. Now what do we actually have here then? We do have a decent amount of assault value. Importantly, we are building up the amount of guns here, which is very nice. I do need actual proper divisions. We do currently have this force here. What is this force doing? The NCPC uh, Infantry Brigade. You don't currently have any orders. You're just here. That's rather intriguing. Hmm. What is your assault value? You have an assault value of 40. That's actually pretty good, you know. Okay, that's actually going to be quite handy. I could use that as like a garrison force. For example, like over here, it might mean I could free up another uh, unit somewhere. So I do have the 12th army here. 
Now the 12th Army... Xinyan. Xinyan? I'm going to have them plan for Cheng Chao. I don't know who they command, but I'm going to assume that they do have forces in the area. Uh, Alright, your plan for here. Uh, for example, in Xu Chao, we do have a garrison requirement of 100. It wouldn't be enough to alleviate that. I wouldn't be able to send this out. But I could... We have a lot of forces here. Oh, right, okay, yes, they need to be actually moved. Uh, from strategic to combat, so they actually will be effective. Awesome. These forces, however... So I do have a pretty powerful brigade here. Hmm. Okay, we'll leave them to rest and train, obviously keep uh, that going. The engineers, obviously, will remain in place. <laughs> yeah, I know, right. I was out uh, for a little while. I just had to get a couple things done. Um, I'm going pretty well. Going pretty well. I just had to go and do some Christmas shopping, to be fair. So I'm back now. Right. I do have the 27th Division here. The issue is the amount of actual garrison requirement. I could, however, move the 7th rather easily. So what we'll do then is we'll have the 7th move out. I'll have the 7th move to, let's say, Su Chao. So I'm going to move these additional forces to Su Chao. So I'll take the NCPC Brigade here, the first. Right, you can't currently move strategically, but I'll have you move uh, via your own steam towards Su Chao. Right, I do have two tank regiments over here. That's rather nice to have. Yeah, sword value is a little bit mixed, but it's still worth it. Right, so we have enough China army, well, area army. Your plan for Cheng Chao? Your plan for Cheng Chao? Good. Right. And again, this is my favorite song, so it's going to turn up a little bit more. There we go, we'll just put that on repeat. Okay, so we're going to have these forces begin to move out. Get us some requirements here, of course. Ah, uh, actually, if I move you, we probably won't satisfy this. Hmm. That is a lot of armor, and armor is very valuable. The AA would be very handy as well. Okay, what we'll do then is we'll have them prepare to move, but I am going to look for additional forces here. I do have the 29th Infantry Division that is going to move. Um, I was a little bit reluctant to move too many units, but we definitely do need more divisions here. Uh, so we're going to move our divisions from actually in Manchuria. Now, I do need to be careful of this, but we can definitely handle that. I mean, that's what, 400... That is... 414. So we do have more than that. I do have a construction unit here. Okay, we're going to move you strategically to Fusan. Is there a garrison requirement here? No, there's not. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, yeah, we'll take this regiment. Now, it wouldn't be a terrible idea to have some additional reinforcements sent to this area, uh, considering the threat that the Chinese are posing up over here. So I'm going to send additional reinforcements. The reason for that is I do not want to lose these settlements that are very far out and very annoying to take. Uh, some nice resources there. Now, that's quite a nice city at Xi'an. There's actually oil here, which is rather impressive. Actually, a refinery too. That's rather attractive. Hmm... That is rather intriguing. Okay, you begin to plan for that, why not? Okay, we'll have these forces unpack. Right, 12th Division. 
There's also a lot of artillery here. Yeah, there's a lot of artillery. Okay, so we don't seem to actually need a garrison here, which is really nice. Okay, this is actually an exceptional amount of force here. What we're going to do then is we are going to take it. Take it all. So, set all to this operation mode. Set all to follow. The headquarters will remain in place. The base force will remain in place of the engineering unit. Whatever it is. Uh, the garrison unit, there we go. Hello there, HNTC, how you doing, my friend? I'm back with a brand new track. Okay, so that's about what, just, um... Uh, yeah, just 1,100, something like that. Yeah, 700 plus 400, yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got a little bit more, so we'll move the 25th division. They're going to move to Anyang as well. Now, that will be the vast majority that will be taken out for now. I do have a construction unit over here. Uh, we do have a couple of construction units. They're going to move to Korea. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Right, that's all to follow. So if I take a look here, yeah, only these guys will follow, everybody else will not follow. Only the engineers. Which is good, because we need to actually get them there, so we can actually start to work on the actual port here of Futsun. Yeah, I mean, I'll mourn, I'll mourn the goddamn Haruna, if she does indeed fall beneath the waves, but... I think this is it. I think it's one of these things where it is going to be the choice that probably will be right. We'll see. If it isn't, it isn't, but there's nothing I can do about that. Okay. So. Hmm. So we are lacking on the get out some required, uh, requirements here. I do need to move some additional forces around. Uh, we do have over requirement here. Right, Coastal Fortress. That's very nice to know that we have that. Um, yeah, okay, what I'm going to do then is move you. So I'm going to move the 41st Guard Battalion to take possession over here at the base. Right, I do have Naval Guard here. Right, so these forces were moved in from the north. Right, combat. I don't have many of these, uh, well, I don't have any of these in reserve. What are the pilots like? So they are gaining experience, of course. Uh, what we are going to do then in the following phase, I reckon, depending on how things turn out, uh, I'm going to take a look throughout my squadrons on the front lines, and I'm going to look for a really experienced pilot. We'll only need a couple to send back to the actual uh, squadrons that are training. Uh, we'll figure out how many squadrons we need uh, to have an experienced instructor, and then we'll go from there, really. I'd like to actually figure out that number before I do anything. Right, what I'm going to do here then is I'm going to uh, transfer a couple more cargo ships into here. Okay. Uh, now, there is some wisdom in moving them as they fill up, but I'm going to move them as one mass, just so I get that big influx of resources into Japan itself. I'd rather not do it piecemeal. The reason for that is really it comes down to uh, management of just my time. Right, what do we have here? We have a lot of cargo ships. These are basically the ships from across the Empire. Uh, that are... Yeah, there's a lot of ships here. 
a hell of a lot. So there, like, Carl, how you doing, my friend? Now, it's going to be interesting. We'll see how many ships we can actually have in the task force. Yep, see the, uh, <laughs> the maximum is 58 here. Not possibly the actual limit of the port. Uh, so what we'll have to do then is figure out which ships are going to be worth converting. So you could actually be converted to an auxiliary aircraft uh, tender or an auxiliary repair. That's actually rather attractive. Time to yard them again. Yeah, pretty much. Intriguing. So you could actually be quite a number of AVs or auxiliary ships here. So you could be an AV, for example, or an AS. So we could have a submarine tender, we could have a aircraft uh, tender, we could have a auxiliary repair. Now that does rather intrigue me. Hundreds of max. Okay, fair enough. Um, let's see. Not that. There we go. Yeah. I mean, the ones that are moving from Formosa, uh, Formosa are basically the ones that aren't going to be in convoys. Yeah, the ones in Osaka are just the ones that aren't of use. I mean, I'm going to sort through them and see which ones are actually useful and convert them. The rest of them are just moved there to Osaka, uh, basically just to make it easier to organize things. Don't worry, I'm not using them all from there. Okay, they are. Hmm. Now these could be rather handy. Uh, it is a picture of the Haruna, supposedly. Though I am rather tempted by the AV variant. So you could handle... Yeah, seaplane support is 16, 4 aircraft. Would not move in the battleships. Yeah, so they can. I'm kind of tempted to have them converted to the actual auxiliary pairs, they seem quite handy. Though, we'll see, we'll decide on that one at a later date. I'm really looking towards more like patrol boats. Right, so we are unloading some resources here. In fairness, I could just disband them all. Right, we do have an oiler here. It is a rather slow one, to be fair. It's a nice big tanker. Hmm. Yeah, we'll definitely be converting the seaplane carriers when they're able to be done, so... Ah, oh, thank you, Snow Wolf. Uh, when are you gonna do more Black Eyes? I'll be doing more Black Eyes soon, I just need to get this turn done. I know, it's like, I've like... I tell you, mate, I'm like a crocodile. It's like, I have these bursts of activity on certain games, and then I'll be, like, really quiet for a long time, and then, like, boom, burst, and, yeah, that's, like, that's how I work. <laughs> um... I don't know, I have a weird schedule. I don't really have, like, a set schedule. I just have, like, sort of, like, um, I need to do this, like, priorities. Ah, that's nice coffee. Okay, Natori. But thank you very much for the donation there. That really is very helpful. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, of course. What I mean 
Well, I'm not going to turn them all into patrol boats. <laughs> God damn it, no, that'd be ridiculous. Uh, what I mean here is, for example, uh, there are certain types of cargo ships that are more suited to different tasks, for example. Uh, any chance for more Dark Azar videos? Yeah, I'd like to do some, uh, maybe like a Kaiser Reich one. Po probably because Russia. That could be fun. But yeah, what I'm going to do is actually look for certain types of ships that are decent. Auxiliary gunboat, that's rather intriguing. Uh, we'll have uses for all of them. Some of them aren't really great, but it's not a bad idea to just to have something on standby that can actually carry something. Or it does come in handy. Right, so currently loading supplies. Hmm, is that the Saturday Guard? I think this is the first time I've seen the stream. Welcome. Okay, you're loading a lot of supplies here. Right, load troops, turn on loading troops only. So I can't carry the 4th division here. Kaiserreich in Hartsfine 2, yeah, definitely Hartsfine 2. Right, you can't fit here at the moment. Let's see. So if I verify that load, what could I get here? So if we get more ships. Right, we can't do it. We're definitely short of capacity there. If the Americans will always outproduce you, uh, outproduce you, so you should go and try and make your existing ships last as long as possible. Yep, mate. Trust me, it's it's not. Yeah, remember fuel efficiency per ton is the main start. That's very true. <laughs> yeah, don't get me wrong, mate. I've thought long and hard about that one, and it does really bloody concern me because at the end of the day, I don't feel happy with either decision. But like I said in the previous one earlier today, it's like I'm going to go with the rule of numbers. I'm going to go with the one which I feel uh, may ensure the survival for now. I mean, what we've got to bear in mind is Haruna is a very damaged ship. She has a lot of flotation damage. She's not guaranteed to make it through this turn, given whatever we do. It's not guaranteed. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically operating on the actual practical of now. And right now, the threat is very large. That is possibility of Force Z sallying out from Singapore, as well as additional forces sallying out from Singapore. Uh, there's additional bombers that may be inbound. They might come here. We don't know. So that dictator, how you doing, my friend? So we do need to be very careful. So what I've gone with is basically the law of numbers. That, and we do have the greatest amount of air coverage over this one area. I'd rather not split that up because that does put the landings at risk as well. So that dictator, how you doing, my friend? Uh, with some proper optimization, can I lose hold of the air? Yeah, we definitely will. Um, we don't have any repair ships within range. I don't think we really have many repair ships in this side of the, uh... In this side of Asia, really. Mm. Though, that is an interesting question which I'll actually take a look at. Kinichiwa. Uh, not much, mate. We've only just started about 23 minutes ago. Which is legitimately just getting started for me. Not just getting started. Right, auxiliaries. AVs, AR. Right, we only have two of them. So this one is over here in Task Force 304. You're over here in Japan. Right, I can actually uh, send you out there. Uh, how much could a auxiliary repair do? Not a terrible amount. Let me see, I'm just going to get my actual manual. Two seconds. Okay. Did you cover the torpedo? Right, did you cover your torpedo bombers next to the Mersing area? Uh, they're just in front of the Mersing area. Um, I'm very reluctant to put them any further. It's like tree would cover Mersing, but they are covering the area to the south of Mersing with which the actual uh, Task Force Z will actually cross, so they'll catch them if they do enter, that is. Okay, just looking through the actual manual here. Just uh, find the actual section I'm looking for. I tell you, the manual's freaking great, so beefy. Girthy. That's that's it. Girth. We like a bit of girth, don't we? Okay. Well, that tells me jack shit. An auxiliary use repair damage to other ships. That tells me fucking jack. I need numbers. Hmm. Okay, well, that's fine. 
But the only ARD you have is on truck. Yeah, I mean, that auxiliary repair dock is uh, obviously really quite far away. We do have the uh, Yamabiko Maru, so at least we do have the option to actually begin to send her out that way. So we'll do that. So we'll have her basically load her tender if she does have tenders. Okay, she doesn't, but we'll have her made ready to ship. That's pretty interesting. Uh, the US and the Allied forces in general do have much better uh, repair than I do. So that's something that we do have to bear in mind. Uh, either way, we'll send this. It's not great, but it'll do. Let's make sure you're ready to go as well. Okay, so you don't need to repair. Sorry, reload. Um... I think this is actually just an ammunition carrier. I can't remember what else it is. But we'll add it in anyway. We'll find an escort on the way, but we'll begin to actually send them out now to... Let's say Kotoburu. Right. So we are looking at about 27 days with the rest of the APDs, which is going to be great. I'd rather not lose any of the minicars the APDs, so let's hope that never happens. Okay. What I'm going to do here then is I'm going to actually have them sent to Ominato, basically so we can begin to unload some resources here. The rest obviously will just combine. So that is Task Force 160. There we go. Hmm. Let's take a look at the tracker. Repairing below waterline holes probably not in any AR's wheelhouse. Yeah, pretty much. So, ship upgrades, conversions, AR. Yeah, Q shoes we're not going to convert. They're bloody awesome. Okay, so it seems only the Kyushu and the Hushimi. Those are the Congo Maru. Um, but this is rather interesting then, so it seems only the Hushimi could be converted to an actual... There can actually be quite a few things. Uh, yeah, okay, let's convert a couple of those to actual... Uh, auxiliary repairs. They do sound rather nice. Let's have a look at Hushimi, uh, Hushimi's. So we have a couple here. Uh, we'll take about... and say about three for the time being. Non you. Well, fuck. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so these are Hishimi's. Uh, so they have 11,250. Okay, so we'll send the Hishimis over to Tokyo. There we go. And then we can decide what we want to actually do. Yeah, I'd love to have me some AVs. Not gonna lie on that one. They're pretty freaking awesome. At least the Hishimi class does come in handy then. Right. So we do have that to deal with.
Is it a lot of force here? Definitely a lot of force. I do like all of that AA as well. Okay, so they're going to combine. Uh, let's take a look then. So these numbers are going to obviously increase as we are converting the production for uh, a lot of different things here into... Well, we're really mainstreaming it, which is going to be really nice. So at least next time we'll see things main... Well, streamlined, I should say. Right, aviation support here is going to obviously increase. Uh, so we're spending the port here, 2%. 39% uh, yeah, this is going pretty good. Hmm, only 5%. Interesting. Okay, so what we're going to do now is actually consult the operations report. And uh, we need to see if we can find any sort of evidence of uh, enemy carriers. That'd be rather, rather handy. Hmm. So the 52nd Naval Guard is the one that is being uh, loaded at wake. So they're obviously going to be heading towards Midway. Hmm. Okay, so we can see here these H6K4s, Mavis's, uh, from, yeah, uh, grounded due to maintenance. Right. What's a Sock 1 Seagull? I wish I could tell you. I wish I could tell you that. Okay, I'm gonna have these guys use bombs at the time being, actually. I'm going to put them on naval attack. Actually, no naval search. So there, Bensky, how you doing, my friend? Right, we do have a destroyer tender here. Uh, this is actually a very useful ship, so we're going to have that loaded up. She's going to head out to actually uh, service the destroyers over here at Wake. Hello there, Judy. How you doing, my friend? Uh, oh, today my board game Nimitz arrived. That's awesome. I've never really played one of those games. To be honest, I did order the 4th edition of Warhammer Roleplay Fantasy, so that's going to be rather interesting. I've never actually played anything like that, so that's going to be really cool. Well, I mean like fantasy, like uh, Warhammer Fantasy, not 40k. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because my group, like most of them have no idea about 40k, so I'm like, ah, fuck it. Might as well do something that's going to be a little bit easier for them to actually get into. Plus, I'd love... I'm actually really considering like, doing some, like, Warhammer uh, Total War 2. Because, I don't know, I've just really started enjoying it. I played, like, a co-op game and I got into it, so that's pretty cool. I've been enjoying playing as Chaos so far. Uh, so far, playing as, like, Colex and Eater is pretty awesome. 
Dude's pretty massive. Yeah, fuck Age of Sigma. Fuck all that noise. <laughs> Right. Actually, no, I thought you were... You no, know, I thought you were the troops from Midway. Sorry, from Wake. You're rather heavily damaged, aren't you? Okay. What we'll do then is... Let's take a look. Yeah, we're going to have you and we're going to disband you here. Your 300 turns into Warhammer 2 Chaos Campaign. Jesus Christ. Right, we'll have you disbanded. So if we go into the Port of Wake Island, take a look at ships under repair. Well, it's not under repair as of yet, but it will be. Alright, you're here at the moment. Yeah, there's a lot of shit here. You're actually still on fire. Yeah, firefighting. Um, if you want to search for an enemy task force, look in the OP and intelligence report of your subs and ships being overflown by enemy search planes. Yeah, that's pretty much what I was going for. Like, looking for the search planes. Well, the thing is, I'm not really particularly looking for search planes. I'm also looking for, like, enemy torpedo bombers or dive bombers, that sort of thing. Fighters, potentially. Uh, vampires are like whack-a-mole. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look then. Operations report once more. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna finish my coffee. Because like, I always, always bloody have a cold coffee, so I'm just gonna finish it. Two moments. What I'm gonna do is just like have it here and then I can have a quick look myself while I have a bloody nice coffee. <clears throat> right, there we go. Uh, you should not be drinking tea. Mate, I'm really not a fan of tea. You, you see, the issue is, it's like, with the job I'm doing at the moment, it's like I have so many people that make us teas, and it's like, I don't like tea very much. But the thing is, I really don't like bad tea, and so many people make bad tea. And it's awful. What's worse is, as well, it's like, by the time I actually get around to drinking it, it's always cold anyway. So I'd rather have a cold coffee, because coffee tastes okay when it's cold anyway. I'm used to that. So, when I have a cold tea, it just makes me want to throw up. So yeah, there's a little bit of tidbit. Tidbit of information there. I'm sure you'll be able to use that. <laughs> Alright then. So I do notice here that Hosho's uh, actual squadrons have increased in size, which is rather interesting. Did you figure out how to read your intelligence and OP report on the tracker? You know, I had to look into it. I'm actually going to quickly have a go at that. See, I liked... It's weird, actually. I never liked coffee until I turned 16, and then I just... I just liked... Yeah, I just liked coffee. I like tea, but I like good tea. And there's a big difference between good tea and bad tea. A lot of people make bad tea. A lot of people make terrible, terrible tea. Okay. I mean, coffee's hard to get wrong. You have to be a fucking idiot to get coffee wrong. <laughs> well, I'm English, not British. Always English. English first. Most because it's an identity that certain people are trying to eradicate. Hmm. Okay, you can make me a cup of tea. If it's actually good tea, I'll have it. It's just, I, like, I'll have bad tea. 
but I'll just not like you for it. <laughs> yeah, it really bloody is. Like, making a good cup of tea is very difficult. Right. Hmm. That plane is from a heavy cruiser or CL or BB. Look, my dude, which plane are we talking about here? Are you talking about that golfing? Oh, you very. Yeah, here we go. Right, I'll take a look at the goal. Uh, yeah, the goal hasn't stood out to me because I'm not familiar with it. Is it actually a um, search plane that would be attached to an American carrier? See, this is it. I'm really not familiar with what sort of uh, reconnaissance craft they have. Hmm. Okay, there we go, we got that working. So we should be able to get the operations working as well. So it seems like we just need, yeah, okay, so that should be it then. So we need the most up-to-date one. Which is rather obvious. Two seconds, my dude. Awesome, there we go. That was actually quite easy. <sighs> That's what the ship ledge is for. True. Yeah, there we go. I mean, we'll do it like this in the future, then. Right then. So who has actually spotted this actual gull then? Let's go back and take a look. So whereabouts was that then? Uh, will you begin Shock Falls to? Um, it depends really how much it is actually. I mean I'll try and email the actual developers but they never ever get back to me which is really irritating. Because it's like at the end of the day it's so easy to work with actual influencers. Which I suppose what we bloody are. At the end of the day, I was like, what have they got to lose? I need to look at that one. Right. Who spotted the gun?
D3A1 Valve Sighter and Port 1 Allied Ship at 154111 near Johnson Island, speed 16 moving southeast. Intriguing. 154111. Right, it's on this line here. Hello there, Albert. How are you doing, my friend? I think this is the first time I've seen streams, so welcome. I know you have a lot of fingers in many pies, XTRG. That sounds vaguely sexual. Uh, but do you think you could ever have a crack at a Fall of France-style campaign, holding off the Nazis? Uh, what in like, particularly, like, uh, Hearts by Fall or something like that? I mean, could do something. Right, now I'm rather intrigued here. So we do have an actual report from a D3A1 Val from the actual carriers reporting apparently one allied ship at this location. That's interesting. Well, Pearl Harbor's good with submarines. Uh, midway, we don't need to particularly bother at this moment. You know, I'm rather intrigued by this. This is actually very interesting uh, information here. Now, supposedly, there's a ship here. I'm going to go with the actual uh, reasoning that that is actually probably a submarine. It would make sense in terms of national speed. Now, what we're going to do here, then, is actually go into here. We're going to go into ships. We're going to go towards uh, active. We're going to go towards the... Uh, well, actually, I'm going to go to ship classes. Uh, we're going to go to the US Navy. I'm going to take a look at submarines. Well, actually, let's take a look at speeds. I'm going to assume it's a submarine. So we'll take a look at submarines first. Right, available. Now, I'm going to assume that it's probably a submarine. There's not many ships that travel at that specific sort of speed. Let's do a little bit of investigation here. So from what I know of submarines, they travel... Let's quickly check here. So, my submarine over here... You could do... At 22 knots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is where you end up. I can't remember. I'd say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So. One. Well, actually, I'm not going to count that one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Five. Well, then again, I should be counting this. I'm doing this wrong. Uh, but what I'm trying to work out here is roughly how many days it would take for them to actually move out this way. Say it was a submarine actually heading from Pearl Harbor. Now, we've been in this area for a couple days. Uh, about four to five days. So that makes sense. A submarine that was to head out immediately from Pearl Harbor would be within that sort of range. So that does make sense. Now, considering it was at 154... Uh, 111. Yeah, 153. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so if we take a look at this, that's roughly four to five days. So I'm going to go with the assumption that it's a submarine. It's either a submarine or, as Carl says, a false report. Yeah. Now, I'm going to go with the assumption it's a submarine. The reason for that is... The speed is very interesting. Only submarines have that sort of speed. Or, obviously, other cargo ships. Um, but I'm going to treat it as a real report. Because it is very likely that a submarine could potentially make that distance. They might even make it sooner depending on their speed. The goal is for a sure sighting as it denotes a class of ship it comes from as well as a class of aircraft. That's rather intriguing. So where do we find that? Um, I've yet to find that in the operations report, so what we're going to do here is we're going to knock that one, because that one's not going to be really a threat. Uh, so operations report. I'll go from the top and then we'll look for the actual goal. This seagull? It's 378. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, that's why I'm leaning towards it being a submarine, due to the fact that it would probably be operating underwater near the actual carrier. That's what I'm going to go with the assumption of. Right. We'll take a look at the actual coordinates, but that doesn't seem to be anywhere near here. So, 83.78. Eighty three So eighty three seventy eight, which is here. Okay. So he's aware of my actual ships. Now I'm going to tell them to move at full speed. They're obviously not going to move very quickly. Uh, but if we can get them ashore sooner, that would be good. So we're going to land here. Or do I do that? Actually, you know what? That isn't a good idea. What we're going to do then is we're going to instead change to here. The reason for that is I'll actually take control of the rail line here. If I take control of that rail line, and then when I take control of the base here at Naga, I could actually have my troops move strategically to the base here at Monan. And that obviously is going to save significant time. So that's very good. We can then spread out from here, and potentially even take the base here at Patangas. Good, good. That's going to save us some time. Right, there's no aircraft here at the moment.
Hmm. I could do with them elsewhere, really. What I'll do then is I'll have them on training for the time being. Well, naval search would probably be a better way. Right, I'll have them on training. What is the airbase uh, size here? Right, you are expanding the airfield. That's very good. See, this is a level 8 airfield. Now, this is what he has at Clark. Now, if we take a look at the amount of aircraft it can actually serve, that is a lot of bloody aircraft. That's a lot of groups he can actually look after all at once. That's what you have to bloody bear in mind here. Red Manila. Where in the hell are you going? Right, okay. Okay, yeah, sure, just carry on going back to Tokyo then, I guess. Uh, we'll use those mortars elsewhere. I mean, these ships are rather valuable and they are pretty quick, so I'll have them head out that way. Hmm. So, the campaign in China is going to be rather interesting. We do have forces moving. We do have a division that is going to be moving to Hainan. Uh, why put them on training when they can real experience over China in a low threat environment? Well, that's a good point, actually. We'll do that then. That's a good point. Yeah, I'll take Van and Baldwin. Roger, currently reconnaissance. In, well, reconnoiter? Well, reconnaissance of uh, Clark, so I'm going to change you to Manila. Uh, hmm, I'm thinking of starting a small play by email campaign myself, like Carl Sea or Guadalcanal. Yeah, that's the best way to actually get some experience. Those are very good scenarios. What the hell was I looking at those uh, reconnaissance planes?
I'm going to have them cover Task Force 294 just in case he does attack me there. It would be nice to have some additional air assets on the location. Right. So guys, let's brainstorm here. We need to figure out what else we can do in this turn. I do have a few tankers here now. Okay, we do have some additional support. Uh, their speed is 18 knots. Hmm. So your loading has been completed. Now Hosho could have her numbers increased here. Lovely. Hmm. What is the capacity of the ship here? So I'm going to have that resized as maximum. Well, then again, no. Default. So I can have you resized to 20. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, for example, I could have them upgraded to the A6720, but I'm not going to do that due to the fact that I need these. I do have 38 A5M4 claws, however. So what I will do then is... Uh, let's see. I'm going to have you resize to size 20. So resize to 20 planes. The reason is for that. Of I want to actually have these guys... Dropped off an actual um, island bases. Same as these. Have them resized. Well, what I'm thinking is we'll actually have it deployed out into the Pacific. The reason for that is we're not going to be facing much in terms of resistance, unless it's a carrier. Unless it's a carrier, then yeah, we are going to face our resistance. Uh, but what I'd like to do is actually have it in place to just give us some actual additional support. And I could have it transferred to China, but uh, I don't think it's even going to be particularly worthwhile there. But I think out in the Pacific, where he's going to have to try harder to get the actual decent stuff out here, unless he's using carriers, then I'll just use these e well A5M4 claws. Right. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Do they all have orders? Oh, sweet, they already have their orders. That's fantastic. That makes my life significantly easier. Okay, so let's take a look at Canton Island. We did do well here to take it, so I'm happy about that. I'm going to have you obviously take off full speed. Take you down to cruise. Well, not cruise, but mission. Uh, not full. Mission. There we go. Right. Okay. Replenish task force at sea. Obviously share that fuel around. Now I do have these crews of mine layers. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to form mine lane task force. It's funny actually, they do have some of the best gun power. <laughs> they actually have... I mean, these are very old ships. These are very, very old ships. So you're not fuck it. They're going to come in handy. Fucking love it, mate. Right, you don't have any fucking minds. You're actually a rather newer one. What I'll do then is I'll have this one disband for the time being. When she gets some supplies here, then I can have it actually produce some mines. So obviously the damage here is quite extreme. So we'll unload these supplies. What I'm going to do now is make ready a cargo ship to actually bring some supplies out here. We'll have it set out from truck. I 
I do have another AV here. What I'll do then is I'll take you. You do have a decent amount. Well, you actually only have... Fuck now, that is awful. Okay, we're not taking anything from track considering it's shite capacity. What do I have over here? Babel Moab. How about over here? Hawahawahalajina. See, you pronounce it perfectly. Nobody can dispute that. Right. I do have some very good, um, yeah, that's some nice range. It's a valuable ship. It is a use and ender. It's actually very nice. Toho will do fine, however. Or, we have the Aidens. I'll take the Aidens. I have two of them, and they do have some very impressive capacity. So what we're going to do here, then, is, uh, I'm not going to take it from here. I'm instead going to have them head to truck. We can, where they can actually pick up that supply, and we'll take it down to Canton Island. Okay. Right. How do we want to use these? I think what we're going to do then is I'm actually going to bring you down uh, towards Fiji. I want to see what's going on here in this area. We'll move him down that way. Okay. See, what I'm doing here as well is these guys do obviously have float planes. Well, most of them have float planes. This one does have a float plane, which is very nice. It seems you could actually be converted to a uh, transport. Intriguing. Hmm. Right, you know what? We're going to recombine Kiribu type for the time being. The reason why I'm going to do that is because I want them to basically refuel. We'll have Kiribu Tai completely refueled. And we'll take a look at potentially swapping around a couple um, squadrons as well. See, I can understand why you'd say ACM's near Australia. But I think that's far too close. I need them out in the sticks over here where that endurance comes in handy. And where it becomes a bloody pain in the fucking arse for him to be able to do anything about it. So in reality, what I'm going to do is, instead of having you out in this area of nowhere, I'm actually going to take you towards Panama. That's where you're going to go. You're going to head towards Panama. Which isn't that far away. But I'm going to have you operate out this way. You'll also do me some nice reconnaissance on the way. Right. So as far as we can tell, we've not had any additional evidence of enemy carrier activity. Okay. Start to hit these forces over here. Lacking on pilots. Yeah, no wonder they're not seeing anything. We 
We're still looking solid over here. We need to build up the fortifications once more. Currently, they're at level 1. Uh, we are expanding them once more. Ideally, I mean, the thing is, um, he is going to see another assault here. Uh, there will be another assault on uh, Ichang. So, this is interesting. Uh, we'll probably be able to throw that back as well. Now, unless he begins to honestly keep on attacking, he's not going to reduce the fortification level. So, we'll just keep to build that up. Uh, what are the ships near the subs near your carriage? Yeah, it's a very interesting question, that one, isn't it? We looked at that one some time. Uh, but we have, supposedly, a light cruiser. Now, whether that information is accurate, I don't know. I really don't. So, that is really one of the reasons that has prompted me to recombine Kirubutai. Because I don't know what this is. I genuinely don't know what this is. I don't know if I believe... Yeah, THG is definitely going to shock attack again. The reason is because of this unit here. I j <laughs> I hope he never realizes that when you attack across the river, it causes a shock attack. I just hope he never fucking realizes that because that works to my advantage. <laughs> because that's bloody beautiful, mate. It is a thing of absolute beauty. I can see what he's doing over here, he's massing forces. I feel like he's going to definitely try and push on this base here. It's a good thing that we're actually building the fortifications up, because level 4 fortifications are going to fuck you up, son. What do we have here in terms of garrison? Uh, not a massive garrison. Actually, no, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now, currently, these forces are on rest. The reason for that is it actually builds up that. Well, it actually keeps their... Uh, it spins up. Well, he's lost... He lost about... I think he's lost about 3,000 each time. Can I reinforce each Chang? I can't. Not yet. It's too far out at the moment. This force will hold. I mean, we did have a force that I did manage to get into Ichang before the Chinese arrived. Uh, so that is definitely going to help to hold this city. But the thing is, um, they're doing well. They're definitely doing well. They'll hold on. Yeah, I can imagine forts at level 6 start to make a big dent. <laughs> forts in general are awful. Yeah, War Z style bodies. <laughs> uh, I mean, speaking of fortresses, we are wearing down the one over here. Hmm. I wonder why. That is interesting. Okay, so we have our APD over here. And so that carried only a couple tons of resources, really. Sorry, a couple tons of supply, but I'm going to take it over here, just because why in the hell not? Um, it's a good point, isn't it, the information war? It's like I lost that base because I bloody attacked at the wrong time. But that's fine, we can easily recapture that. Um, but as far as it goes, we are doing well here in China. We will definitely be able to do a lot. Uh, those are 80 guns, only for support against enemy vehicles. Okay, that's fair enough, that's fair enough. Um, he's got numbers to lose. I mean, there's 106,340 troops here, supposedly. He's got numbers to lose. It doesn't particularly matter. But what I'll do is I'll just use my air forces to bombard them and live in hell out of him when I get the opportunity to do so. Um, yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, what I'm trying to do here is I'm massing my forces over here to Kaifeng and Anyang, as we do need to take control over here. I probably need to move before he realizes that. So, let's see here. Ideally, some reconnaissance would be nice. So, we'll get to work on that. We have all of these forces here. Uh, a few of them need to unpack, so we'll wait for them. But actually, let's see what we have available to move now. These forces could move. But I'll wait for the rest. I do have some reconnaissance over here. So this would be a good actual target for them. Right, I'd like to find some information here. 
when reinforcements from Manchur to get to the front lines, uh, yeah, China's going to be a bloodbath. Yeah, that was an impressive amount of VPs. So I'm just waiting on the uh, escort carrier Taiyo to arrive. I'm going to put her on full speed. Yeah, she'll arrive next turn then. I then have some B5N1Ks, but what I'm looking for really is probably some... I don't know, one of these things, isn't it? I'll keep her empty, uh, because at the end of the day, what I can then do is actually pick up some patrol ships. Well, some patrol um, planes, and I should use them. So you can see that there's a ship over here at Midway. Right. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to have you patrol around Midway. Uh, we should be able to clear China. Depending on how things go, I don't think we'll have much trouble doing that. I mean, the thing is, uh, I do want this to be a long campaign, but I do want to try and win this. Which is why I'm doing some very risky things and some very uh, forward things. So, we've so far taken a island each turn. We should take Guam next time, which could be nice, so hopefully we can try and keep that up. Um, but we have Canton Island, which actually eliminated a rather important engineering unit, which is very nice. Now, we're going to be striking at Tarawa, and then Tarawa, from Tarawa, we will then be able to strike forward towards Suva. Suva is going to be very nice. That's a rather nice base there. Fiji itself is very, very good. If I was actually to take control of the area here, that'd be rather disadvantage. Well, it'd be a rather big pain in the arse for him. But those vi uh, victory points are very nice. I mean, there's what, like 600-ish there? Yeah, 600-ish. That's very nice. Okay. If I remember correctly, the ships that landed near Singapore will be reinforced by the other landing ships, so that will increase the AA fire. Yes, it will. So, reinforce and mercing, we have this force over here. Well, one of them. Uh, so, the mercing invasion. So, that's only 2,521, but we do have an additional heavy cruiser, the Chokai. Uh, we do have a light cruiser, a couple of destroyers. We do have some APDs as well. Nothing massive, but it will reinforce it. I do then have an additional wave over here. So we do have a couple of waves. So again, only 714. We have a lot of troops. I mean, we have, what, 11,000, 12... Well, we'll just say 12,000. Uh, we'll just say 12,000 here. So that's 24,000 troops here. So uh, we'll have something like 25,000 troops over here at Mercy Inc. Uh, what was the verdict on the Haruna dilemma in the end? I mean, this is it. You are right. It is a dilemma. But you know what? That is what makes the game so bloody good is when you actually feel and I mean, this is it that's when you feel a part of the game when you actually feel for these fictional ships that's when you know the game's good like I know I'm not happy with either decision the reason I've gone for the decision of keeping Haruno with the rest of the ships there is just for the numbers just for the possibility that of hope against hope the bloody Wildebeest and the bloody Swordfish do not strike at Haruna, but they strike at another heavy cruiser. Though we have a large number of fighters that will be flying overhead, and my heart says Haruna will survive, my head says Haruna is dead already, she just doesn't know it yet. Let's see who wins. Let's see who wins. Indeed. If we take Mersing, we will move towards this rail here.
I have a limited amount of time, an extremely limited window of time here, to trap these forces in Malaya. He knows this. He bloody knows this. And he's gonna fight against it. See, Georgetown is rather intriguing considering it does have a supposed LCT there. The damage profile on Haruna is rather bad. So, Congo was damaged as well. But Haruna, 28 system damage, 79 flotation damage, and 28 engine damage. She's hurt. Remember to get Air Force engineers re invasion so you can repair Air Force bases and have fighters. Yep, you are definitely right. Yeah, let's hope so. We will have definitely a significantly larger number of fighters overhead. And let's hope that will work out. Let's hope. I'm not going to char uh, target Georgetown. Uh, we did hit it sometime earlier. Yeah, Haruna is very heavily damaged. Exactly, this game will give you tears of joy and anger. The thing is, I'm not going to be angry if we lose Haruna. I will be sad, but I think her expenditure is one of these where I'd rather not have lost her. But if the immersing gambit does pay off, and it does allow us to actually capture Singapore soon, I'll be happy. Uh, you obliterated Clarkfield, so there will be a lot less P-40s around, unless he moved whatever he had left to another air base range. I mean, this is it. I've now changed tact and actually begun to... Well, I've actually begun to attack here at Mindela. So this airfield is now empty. There's still damage here. But the thing is, we've knocked out his major airfield in the area. Also, ditch Haruna into a separate task force while keeping in Hex. Is that for the actual speed there? I mean, I was wondering about the cruise speed. I mean, we'll do that, actually. I'll make it into a separate thing. Okay, that way it gets echoed but doesn't slow the other ships down. That's a very good point. Okay. I think what we'll do then is we'll do that with the others as well. Um, I'll take these uh, over here. Yeah, you're going to remain here. So at least they will still have that air cover. I think what I'm going to do here... Yeah, okay, that's good to know then. Uh, what I'm going to do here, because I've got these guys actually targeted on separate task forces, I'm actually going to have them target just mercing in general. Well, I know for one that's wrong. Yeah. Uh. Okay. I mean, the AI will still be present. I mean, they're still in the same hex, so there's always the possibility that they will be hit by the AA. But I'll go with that advice. I mean, it is a good point because at the end of the day, then at least these ships will be able to move with their full speed without any issues. And in fairness, what I'll do here then is I'll have them to react to within one hex. Yeah, we don't just have the KI-27s, we have uh, KI-43s and A6M2-0s. We don't really have any other zeros in the area, but I have the squadron here, the Yamada Detachment. Well, y Yamada Detas. Uh, so we have them here. They're to escort, well, to perform uh, long-range combat air patrol over the actual task force. We also do have the KI-43s. 1A and 1B variants. 
We just need to hope for the best. Absolutely need to hope for the best. And it's funny, Val is actually saying there's a CB, which actually means uh, heavy carrier, which obviously means the Prince of Wales. So Val is 4C. And she's going to be heading this way. Yeah. Okay, set in patrol zones with reactions without getting reaction engagements. Well, what I'm thinking here is, uh, it depends really. I don't want them to move from Mersing due to the actual invasion forces heading here. I would like their AA to be present. Um, also, have you split your ship split planes to day night search? Mm, I did have some of them split. But we'll quickly check. Issues where lacking ammunition due to the bombardment. But we still have ammunition to fight. Have you moved your ships back into one force yet? No, we've been in a couple of separate forces here at the moment. What we're doing is we're actually sending some additional ships out this way. We're going to have a picket line. So we'll have a couple of destroyers here. We'll have a couple of destroyers or torpedo boats over this way. Uh, we do have additional forces coming here. Are you set to one hex patrol zone for mercy? Okay, we'll do that then. I suppose at the end of the day that would mean that, uh, yeah, that'll work then. I like that. So, let's see. So, cancel that. Clear destination. Patrol zone. Okay, minor point. If you set night reconnaissance but 50% search, your float planes will search and act as spotters in case of bombardment. Well, that's actually very interesting. Hmm. That's good to know. I suppose what I could do is I could have all the... Yeah, we'll do it like that then. Right, have them operate at night. Okay. So we have our G3 set up to target this area. You're still on loading, we'll then move you out. I do have a actual big transport here that is rather valuable. So we'll have that moved to Indochina. Raj, you're moving back. Uh, they won't be hit more. Really, what it comes down to is... Um, I mean, all of these forces are in the same hex. So you've got to think about it. They're all in the same hex. They're just under different commands. Um, they're not... Like, how it's going to work is really... We could have all the task forces in the world in this area. But the planes will choose their targets. Oh, they're still on naval search. They need the mission... Right, okay. Ah, I see. There we go. Cool. Right then. What orders do I have left to do?
Well, they don't. Right on dog. Load these resources. And there's something in the small island, yeah, like the Coral Sea. And they're on their way to just outside here. And uh, the reason for that is I'm going to keep to the deeper waters. Uh, I'm going to avoid the shallower seas. They're going to patrol this area. I do have additional submarines somewhere. Yeah, there we go. Yes, we already have a force on the way towards Dutch Harbour. Hello there, Satanicus. How you doing, my friend? Hi from Tasmania. Bloody hell. Well, look at this. Look at this. We have you people. You walk through that door. Expecting a hello, and you, you get a hello. Hello, guys. How you doing, my friend? It's nice to see you there, Satanicus. And it's also nice to see you there, Pirate Joe. Yar, me hurry. <laughs> okay. I do have a force heading towards Zam. Um, ADAC is the best base in the region, worth the 9 simply so the Allies can't spend 1942 building it up. I do have a force moving there somewhere. Takikazi. Oh, you have rather low in fuel. Okay. Uh, well, Congo hand of Runa, but we'll try. Uh, not ground forces. Right, there we go. Ah, here we are. Right, so I have... Uh, it's actually a fair number of troops. The reason for this is... I mean, I'd rather... I'll probably... What I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to drop off as... Um, I'm going to drop off the actual armor first. I don't want to take the armor that way. The engineers would possibly come in handy. Uh, but I'll take those troops out and they'll head towards uh, Dutch Harbor. So you say ADAC is the best. Is that because they can be built up so much? Yeah, that does make it... Uh... Yes, we have our R&D under wraps. I still actually need to up these. Miss a couple of them. Yeah, I'm going to drop off the actual uh, armor. I'm not going to take all of those uh, units. So we'll drop off the armor, probably drop off the engineers as well, potentially. It's a little bit overkill. It's a lot of numbers as well, but we'll see what we'll do. We'll, uh, we'll see what's in actually, we'll see actually what's in Tokyo first. And then if we need to put on troops, we can do from there. Uh, no, we don't have Yamato. Well, Yamato yet. Uh, we're looking at actually having her much, much later. I'm going to try and have her arrive at the same time as Musashi. The reason for that is we actually are going to be saving on uh, R&D then. Okay, they need to be in Malaya to combine with other units to form a division. Ooh. Interesting. But what we'll do then is we'll drop them off. Okay, yeah. Uh, what we'll do then is we'll drop them off at Tokyo. And then I'll pick up some additional troops. And we'll go send them to Dutch Harbour. Well, sorry, to Adak Island instead then. And then the other ones we'll send back to Malaya. Uh, I knew I'd miss some of them. So 
So we've definitely refined our R&D. And that is uh, credited to Blackstar for her help. Do you plan taking Alaska or Australia? I think Alaska would be pushing it. It'd be funny, don't get me wrong, I'd love to do it for the memes. But it's it's just... It's a little too close to the US mainland. <laughs> That's a little too close. Yeah, a lot of francs. We are really going to be pushing towards that. Uh, we're going to be going towards basically Albert uh, Spear levels of um, aircraft in the future. Basically, we are prepared to have something that is going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the uh, best of the US aircraft. Uh, we do have the Peggy. We also do have the T-Peggy as well. And I'll show you the actual thing here so you can take a look. So we are researching the A6M3-0, so this is the land variant. But then once we have that unlocked, we're going to, over, we're going to go basically straight to the A6M5. Then we have the A6M2 Sams. We have the B6N1 Jills. We have the D4Y1 Judies. D4Y1C Judy. The Randys. Indeed. Well. We'll be able to see how we feel about things as we go on. Uh, yes, we're going to try and take some of the Illusion Islands. I wish I could expand this to just 30. That'd be bloody angelic. We're doing it really just to um, have the numbers. Some of them will obviously go into production. Others will then go on to continue the R&D. Okay, a couple more here. Uh, yes, the oilers are going to be moving up to refuel Kidabutai. Actually, that works out perfectly. That's rare that it happens. Hmm. I've never played this game before, but what, uh, from what I've learned from watching that... I'm curious if you plan on taking out China ASAP or going to India. Well, what we're going to do is we are going to obviously fight in China. We do have a couple of house rules, uh, such as no troops being taken out of China that are already in China. 
But yes, we will be concentrating on China with the forces that we have there. I'm not going to take any additional troops other than the ones I already have. Uh, we're taking troops from Manchuria, and they will be moving to the base here at Anyang. And from Anyang, we'll be plowing towards Tengshao. Uh, from Tengshao, we'll be able to take command of the rail line. Obviously, once we do take the Chinese forces off over here. It's going to be an initial fight to actually take control of the strategic rail lines here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw on the map, just make it a little bit easier. So this is the base that we really want at the moment. This is a priority number one. Uh, we also are on a campaign to deal with the Chinese forces in the south. What I want to do is actually set things up so eventually we have something... Uh, something like that. I want to control this area of China by the end of 42, at least. Yeah, never worry about the questions. Never worry about the questions, my friend. Uh, will we be hitting the ships in the strait near Singapore? Yes, we will. Well, see, with the Rufy, I'm not going to do that one because I think it's a little bit too gamey. I've got to try and respect some rules. And, um, yeah, I'm just going to try and avoid some of those. The reason is I don't want to upset THG and I don't want people to think, yeah, I'm being gamey as fuck. Yeah. Okay, so. I think we are pretty much ready to go here. Yeah, it's a valid strategy. I just think I, I don't want to upset the boat here. I think at the end of the day, this is a play-by-email game, but I do want to go on for a long time. At the end of the day, it's a massive investment of time for myself and for THG. So, I want to respect him, and I want to respect his viewers. I don't want to have anything gamey for them. I, don't, I can actually uh, argue the case for our current strategy as uh, it is fairly legitimate. At the end of the day, there is different models of zeros. So it would make sense for us to actually jump to a different model of zero, rather than jumping from the roofy straight up over into something else. Yeah, we'll have aircraft to re uh, replace it pretty soon. Okay, so we do have these guys on the way, the 14th. Right, uh, so I'm, uh, I'm actually pretty happy with the turn so far. So we do have the 53rd Division, we have the 54th Division. We have a lot of forces assembled in Nagasaki. Hmm. Yeah, so some marines near the Philippines are going to be moving south. These two are heading towards this way. I did be able to catch them. Uh, what is your oil and rubber situation? In terms of economics, obviously it's not great as we're not bringing anything in at the moment. Uh, so we can see here we're obviously still in a deficit. If we take a look at the actual chart. And let's see. So we're still obviously at a resource deficit. We're still at an oil deficit. We're still at a fuel deficit. Uh, this will change obviously in the future. I mean, what I'm doing here is really focusing on Mersing. We don't have uh, forces in Balfour, Miri, or Brunei as of yet. In the future, we will do. Right. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. And what I'd also like to do is actually have a little bit of island hopping over here to the, uh, well, to, to Leyte, basically. There's some bases over here that I would very much like to take. I mean, Cebu uh, would be nice to have as well. Uh, due to actual resources and light industry, that'd be very handy. We'd be able to actually produce some supplies there. Um, other than that, I'm fairly happy with the turn. Um, I don't think there's really anything that I've overlooked. Probably might have overlooked something. But I don't make any notes. I just go with what I plan to remember. And what you guys whip me with. Right, you have your orders. What is the weather like over the Central Pacific? And uh, let's see, not that. Clear. So we're overcast over here, we're clear over here, we're clear here, which is fantastic. What's the weather like over Malaya? So the weather is overcast over here at the moment. Okay. Overcast. Clear over the Philippines. Yes, clear over here as well. Uppercast, okay. Right then. I'm going to be happy with that. I think I've done everything I can do here. And I'm getting a little bit tired, I'm not going to lie, I've been out today. Uh, I've had work, I've done a little stream earlier on. So I'm going to have a little bit of chill out time. I usually only have like an hour or two to do that, so... <laughs> I'm going to go and play some Total Warhammer 2.
So thank you so very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. I do hope you have enjoyed this. And uh, to those of you who have just joined the stream, one last question. For a while, is fighting the Soviets ever a good idea? No, you do not ever want to fight the Soviets. Basically, to avoid fighting the Soviets, uh, we have to keep a certain level of garrison within Manchukuo, which we are going to be doing. But no, we never, ever, ever want to fight the Soviets. No way. <laughs> it's not worth it. Uh, playing to not die in 43 and at that point, well, that's good. Yeah, that's very true. At the end of the day, we are playing to win in a shorter period of time. I can't really be looking towards 44, 45, because at the end of the day, if it gets to that point, well, I'm going to be fucking old man by that point. But also because at the end of the day, we are going to be on the back foot. We have to play quite bold. Okay. No. Oh, right. <laughs> well then, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you are not a member of the Discord, I do recommend joining. It would be fantastic to see you guys over there. I'm going to post a link here, just in case you're not actually a member, then you can click this link and join ahead. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, as well as the future ones, as well as the rest of the playlist and other content, and you would like to support myself and the channel, you can do so via Patreon, or you can do this via PayPal. Uh, there's also other methods such as Super Chats. All of it is appreciated, and it definitely does help out. So thank you so very much for watching. I do hope you have enjoyed this. And I'm going to cry myself to sleep tonight. Most because I don't want to lose Haruna. But we'll see. If we lose her, it's gonna hurt. But the war's not over. And we have so much to do. Until next time. Goodbye for now. <laughs>